And joining us now, uh, also from our nation's capital, is Republican U.S. Representative Warren Davidson of Ohio. He is a member of the House Finance Committee, a West Point graduate, and a former Army officer. Representative, good morning. I understand you heard that whole speech. Uh, your reaction? Well, it was encouraging to see the Vice President uh, speaking from Poland and to uh, reaffirm our commitment to uh, de-escalate, to try to end this war. I think Secretary Blinken, just prior to her uh, when you cut to her speech, had made it clear that we're trying to, uh, to to end this war, not grow it or expand it. And I think that's the right approach. You know, we don't want this to spread to NATO countries. Uh, it's horrible what Putin has done. It's uh, an unprovoked war on Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine has a right to self-defense. Um, but, you know, I do think it's wise to try to avoid escalating it and to do everything we can to apply pressure uh, to uh, you know, compel Putin. He's not laying awake at night wondering about the next election. To the extent he is accountable, he's accountable to his fellow oligarchs in Russia. And I think the, the sanctions regime that's put in place does apply some real pressure uh, to, to Putin and, frankly, to the people that may have some influence over him. And let's talk about the news that was made just now with her announcement. Uh, 4,700 additional troops on top of the 5,000 uh, that are already in Poland. That affects the U.S. directly. Two Patriot missile systems also delivered to Poland. Uh, and she talked about, about the moral outrage and the responsibility of the U.S. and other NATO countries. Yeah, and look, uh, we've, we've long uh, worked to deploy troops to Poland. Uh, they've really been vigorous in their commitment to NATO and their commitment to fund their own defense and, frankly, to diminish their dependence on energy. And uh, we hope to use this opportunity uh, to solidify the NATO relationship and to make sure that countries like Germany don't do things to weaken it by underinvesting uh, according to their treaty obligations, as they've done for at least a generation. Uh, and by, you know, growing their dependence upon Russia. Uh, President Trump and Secretary of State Pompeo accurately understood that uh, Germany has a lot of leverage over Russia with respect to deterrence. And unfortunately, you know, as we've seen, weakness invites aggression. It doesn't excuse aggression uh, on Putin's part. But I think uh, this war could have been prevented. And I think we need to look hard at the NATO alliance and say, are we going to solidify this alliance? Uh, because the conditions of the United States to defend countries can't continue to be unconditional. Countries that are committed to NATO have to be committed to NATO. They can't ignore their treaty obligations and then still count on America to just come to the rescue. Well, one NATO country definitely holding up uh, its end of the bargain is Poland. Um, 1.5 million refugees in just the past couple of weeks flooding across the border from Ukraine. Uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president, also announcing today another 50 million uh, from the U.S. in humanitarian aid via the U.N. But you think about what Poland is dealing with and the burden this is putting on Poland. If you imagine 1.5 million people crossing our border uh, within a matter of two weeks, that, that is a massive burden. Yeah, I mean, 2 million crossed our border, uh, you know, in a matter of a year. So for perspective, that would be in weeks, uh, you know, something happening like that at our border. So it really, you know, we've seen the challenges in our own border now for uh, in an ongoing way. And, well, our, and our country, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but our country is much, much larger than Poland. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but for perspective, people have been outraged uh, about humanitarian conditions at the border. And, and so, you, you know, for people that haven't seen all these images in Poland, uh, we've talked about it at our country for a long time. And we've, we've got far more resources than Poland, and we still deal with humanitarian issues. I mean, that's a separate uh, cause and, and similar, but you still see the humanitarian cost. Uh, so in, in uh, Poland, absolutely, they're carrying their end of the, bur uh, the burden. And that's why so much aid is there. That's why there's so much support for what Poland's doing. And frankly, when, when someone's attacked unjustly, uh, like Ukraine, uh, there's a lot of support globally uh, for the Ukrainian people. But I do think that the position is right, that America should not be committing to go to combat in Ukraine. Uh, and and uh, I'm encouraged to see the administration speak with a voice that uh, is rational there. And I want to ask you one more thing, and that is about the, the bombing at the maternity ward, these horrendous images uh, coming out. Do you consider this a war crime, and do you think Putin will face consequences? Look, there are a lot of things that, if, if they're accurate in terms of what, uh, what has been shown publicly and, and uh, you know, more, uh, there, there's certainly 
a lot of evidence that, that not just Putin, but Russia's army have committed war crimes. I mean, they're, they're indiscriminate targeting, and then there's willful targeting. And, and it looks like there were some really, really uh, egregious acts by Russia. And, uh, you know, on the other side, it's really a different story to cart Vladimir Putin off to The Hague uh, versus Slobodan Milosevic. But, you know, war crimes uh, should be taken seriously. Uh, they're unjust and not a, not a and that's something that we want to allow to be considered normalized. Well, Representative, we, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.